Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass, and today we're talking about mid-strolling, also known as the jig and minnow. We're taking a look at some of the best new baits and how you can use them. Strolling has absolutely swept bass fishing over the past year and a half. There are techniques that come along every now and then, and this technique is not new. Whether you want to call it mid-strolling, bottom strolling, uh, the Demiki rig, the jig and minnow, whatever you want to call it, uh, moping, this general fishing style is not new. It has been around for a long time, but it has caught fire in bass fishing. And once in a while that happens, other techniques that have been this impactful in the past would be uh, when the A-Rig hit, when the small Kytec hit, when the Senko hit. When those trends happen in bass fishing, if you're not on it, it's not like you won't catch fish, but you will get absolutely hammered by people that are on this new technique because bass are not keyed into it yet. They're very susceptible to it, and it just, it's working. The jig and minnow thing that is going on right now is that big of a deal. It is a huge advantage for you if you put it to work. There are plenty of people still catching bass on everything else, right? You see us throwing, I'm reaching for them, underspins, swim baits, spinner baits. I got all sorts of stuff laying over here. We still throw all the normal things. But there are times when that jig and minnow bite is firing off. We go out strolling and it's insane how well it works. So today what I want to talk about, because this technique is newer in bass fishing and it's trending right now, it seems like every company in the sport is trying to build baits, heads, rods to get in, right? They want a piece of that pie. Well, there's going to be a lot of junk that comes along when that's happening. But there's also some gems that come out of that. So today I grabbed five baits that are really different. Uh, they stand out for one reason or another. And I think if you understand what they're for and how to fish each one of them, they will have a huge impact on your fishing as we go through the colder water months. So today that's exactly what we're going to do is take a look at that handful of baits. Now, let me back up, rewind just a little, and let's talk about this strolling thing. In case you've been living under a rock, in case you haven't tried it yet, let me give you basically the, the details of what this is, okay? Uh, let's grab this one. I'm, I'm not grabbing that one because I'm leaving that one hanging from a rod tip because fish are chasing bait in this cove I'm in. And as I was setting things out, I caught two. They'd come up chasing. I'd reach out, fire that bait, and I could catch them. So I'm leaving that one ready just in case. But strolling, what this is, is uh, essentially taking a straight tail or a pin tailed type soft plastic and putting that thing to work for you in place of a swim bait okay very similar profiles similar head same head but different action so this doesn't do a whole lot other than that tail wag that you see but once you understand how to use them on a proper jig head, what this bait will do, let me turn it this way so you can see, okay? A swim bait will have this wide tail kick as it comes through the water. Or in the case of that swammer I just showed you, which is an amazing bait, it'll have a twisting tail kick as it comes through the water. What this will do when you shake it properly is the body will roll from side to side so it's not tail motion, it's not a kick, it's body roll. And as it turns out, fish are, ooh, big gust of wind. Fish are just as susceptible to this as they have always been to the swim bait. The difference is that they've been seeing swim baits all day, every day, for a decade or more. And most of those bass aren't seeing very much of this yet. 
They're seeing a whole lot more of it now than they saw a year ago. But typically when a trend like this fires off and we realize something is really working, you've got five to 10 years where it just flat gets them. And then it's this slow trend. And then by the end, it's, it's like everything else, still catches fish, but it's not magical, right? Right now we are still in that magical phase with this thing. And that's why we're talking about it today, because if you are missing it, if you haven't got involved yet, if you haven't seen this work, I don't want you to miss it because it is a relatively short time window and you can catch a pile of fish. Now, this thing fired off at the same time as the debate about forward facing sonar, right? And those two things sort of got attached to each other. And I want you to separate that in your mind while you listen to me right now, because this technique works incredibly well with forward facing sonar. If you can look out there and see a bass, throw to them, work it past them. Yes, that works remarkably well. And that's what a lot of people have seen. And if they want nothing to do with forward facing sonar, and we're not having that discussion today, it doesn't matter to me which end of the spectrum you're on, but we can set all that aside because the technique stand alone, whether you are a guy walking the shore of a pond, or you are in a boat with traditional electronics, or you are just fishing with no electronics at all, you can throw this thing out blind and fish it extremely effectively. It has nothing to do with electronics. It's great paired with electronics. It's just as effective without. There are so many people walking the bank, throwing out and strolling, where historically they would throw a chatterbait, a swim bait, a crankbait, a spinnerbait, and all those things still work, but this thing is firing off. Now they're strolling while walking the shore and you just cover water with it because you can fish it very quickly. It's remarkable how well it's working. So just really quickly, because we are talking about how this technique is done. There are, in my mind, there are three baits that have basically set the standard for this style of fishing. And I'll link all this stuff in the description. I'm gonna give you these just because they're the staple. And then as soon as we're done with that, we'll jump into those unique baits and what you can do with each one of them to take this thing to a whole different level, depending on the conditions, what your fish are doing and what you want to do. But those three baits in no particular order from Hog Farmer, we have the 4.5 Spunk Shad. From Crush City, we have the Freeloader. And from Depths, we have the Sakamata Shad, particularly the five inch Sakamata. Those three baits, you put those on a proper head for this style of fishing. It's unbelievable what you can do with them year round. It's amazing. Those are, we're going to call that the baseline. And I can't say one of them is the baseline. Sakamata Shad came first. I could sure say that. Well, I don't even know if that's true, but it was the first one for this method. It was specifically for this. But those baits are all crushing fish at such an extraordinary rate that we've got to talk about all three. Now, as far as heads go, I throw them on a lot of different heads. Like here, I've got some of the tungsten ball heads. Uh, then we switch over to my lead heads. Different styles of heads for different things, but essentially what you need. Now, these are all my different heads, except for my Dirty Jigs guppy heads. They are in their own box entirely. That should tell you something. Um, the main head that I use for this technique year round is this head right here. That's the Dirty Jig Scuppy head, three eighths ounce, three aught hook. Three eighths, three aught. That's the main thing that I'm using. Now, I still use a lot of other heads because there are some great options. Like, the range roller from owner, an amazing option. You know, for the BR fish, we're gonna get to that. There's a dedicated head for that. Uh, for the Great Lakes finesse bait, dedicated head for that. There's a lot of options, but this is the main head that I throw. Uh, and then how you make your connection will matter as well. So a lot of people tie a loop knot. I don't do that. I tie direct to my bait, cinch my knot down, because I don't know that a super exaggerated action is actually catching me more fish than a muted roll. I seem to do my best on a muted roll most of the time, but I'll give you a little trick. 
when you tie a loop knot, most loop knots are really weak. Here's a trick. One of my main knots that I use day in and day out for everything is a San Diego jam knot. Well, the way you tie a jam knot is you essentially make a knot then cinch it all the way down to the jig head. If you want a loop knot that is exceedingly strong, you tie a San Diego jam, and then when it's time to snug it down to the jig head, you just don't quite snug it all the way. You leave a little bit of room and that leaves it free like a loop knot. Now, when I set the hook, that knot is gonna snug up that last 16th of an inch and it's gonna be solid. But when I do want a little more action, that's how I get it. So now that you've got the baseline, you understand the general concept and I haven't shown you the retrieve yet. I'll give you sort of the basics right here. But once we have that general concept, the way I'm implementing the action is with one hand I'm reeling steady, with the other hand I'm shaking the rod ever so slightly. And that creates the rolling action. So where a swim bait, it would just be a slow, steady retrieve. With this, with strolling, I'm going to add shaking with my other hand. And those two things together create that rocking or rolling action with the swim bait. Now, one other tip for you before we jump into these main baits is that when I'm doing this, I have found that two-toned colors work extremely well. What I mean is if this, this whole bait here were all, you know, pearl white, the only actual movement that you can detect is that the hook is moving back and forth. But when I use a two-toned bait, so here we have a very ghosty purple top, and then we have that more solid with silver glitter bottom. When that is rocking, there's a huge visual change happening. And I find that these two-toned colors, I'm gonna leave that one hanging still in case those fish come back. Those two-toned colors make a major difference as you're trying to select which baits should you try in different situations. Okay, let's jump into these five baits. Um, the first one is the one that you just saw me pick up right there, and that's from Hog Farmer, and that's called the Stroll Shad. The Stroll Shad came out at iCast, and Hog Farmer made the Spunk Shad uh, which is an unbelievable bait for a lot of different things. It's, ama it's an amazing chatterbait trailer. In my opinion, the best chatterbait trailer ever made. But when strolling took off, it turned out that it worked exceedingly well for that as well. That spunk shad is amazing. But Hog Farmer took a look and knew that they could take it even further. Because again, it's working incredibly well for this. It's one of the staple baits for this technique but it wasn't specifically designed for that. Insert their new Stroll Shad. So the Stroll Shad is a smooth bodied bait. It has, oh, I just heard a blow up out there. Is it behind my motor? Smooth bodied bait, flatter sides, and it has a stretched tail compared to a Spunk Shad. So here's a, 4.5 spunk shad, oh, dropped it. 4.5 spunk shad next to a four inch stroll shad. The stroll shad is more slender. It's got those flatter sides that really help with that rolling. And then it's got that longer pintail on it that has a lot of action and movement. Even as it's rolling, that pintail is still doing some dancing back there. And that has become, for me, of the new baits, that is my most universal bait. That's the bait that I had sitting here and I caught some fish even as I was getting ready to flip the camera on to talk to you guys. Uh, it's just such a fish catcher. So that Stroll Shad has sort of become my new all around bait. Uh, I just have so much confidence in it particularly as we go through mid fall into late fall and that water temp starts dropping, those thinner profiles 
little more natural looking bait, a uh, little smaller bait, that four inch instead of a five inch, makes a huge difference. Even smaller than that, going down to really small baits can be really, really effective. But that has become my new staple. And typically, you'll see me again throwing it on a guppy head, but I tend to throw it on the one-aught hook. You can throw it on a three-aught, but the three-aught comes back farther. And I think it's easier to get the roll out of it very consistently on a one-aught. You'll also see me throw it on, you know, some of the tungsten heads, uh, smaller range roller heads, like this is the three-aught, but the smaller sizes in that with a one-aught uh, works extremely well too. But that is my new staple. Next up, Hold on, let me back up. I just showed you how to work that. It's a super, my, a super, it's almost a vibration more than a shake, right? A super light shake. Just is how I'm working that. Very fast, almost a vibration of the bait. That gives me the best roll out of that particular bait. And you can fish these at any depth. Like right now, the fish I just caught back here were in maybe four feet of water. And I can catch them strolling no problem, especially on an eighth ounce guppy head, which is what's on it right now. Uh, it's no problem to throw that in shallow water. I can also go to a heavier head up to about a three eighths and I can fish that very effectively in 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 plus feet of water. That's one of the great things about strolling is much like throwing a paddle tail swim bait, you can do it at virtually any depth very effectively just by changing the head. So next bait up. From Duo Realis, we have a bait called a BR Fish. The BR Fish is very interesting. And it's the BR Fish and it's also the BR Head, which is getting all steamy sitting here on the deck. I must've had some moisture in there, but there's the BR Head. What makes this head, it's actually easier to see on the package than it is sitting here in person. What makes this head so unique is this fin on the head. Those fins, it's essentially a, a darter head with two molded in fins. Those fins help it hold its depth. They help it want to dive rather than rise. So where the spunk shed, or I'm sorry, the stroll shad has become that staple for me, that day in and day out, that's my main bait. The BR fish is my head when fish are aggressive. That BR head with that BR fish, the plastic itself is very basic. Let me pull one out that's not rigged. It's like a little tiny fluke type bait, rounded on one side, flat on the other. And then it's got a cool little tail on it, a little fin in the tail. But this is all there is to it. You guys see that there? That little plastic, you rig it flat side down. So turn it essentially upside down. And you rig that on that head and that's how you get here. That bait right there. Oh, there's one that just busted back there. Let me see if I can reach him. Maybe, just maybe. I got close, hopefully close enough. Sorry, I get distracted easily. These fish have just been showing up out of nowhere. That was just one blow up all out by itself. Nothing. I didn't hit right on him, but I was hoping I was close enough. We're just gonna keep that rod handy, just in case. Back to the BR fish. Really, I wish I had the BR fish tied on right now too, because it's perfect for this situation. When bass come up shallow and they're aggressive, they're chasing bait. And I say shallow because I, in my head in the fall, when a lot of the fish I like targeting are fish that corral bait into shallow pockets. So that's for me, one of the places where this really shines. Now the BR head comes in a whole bunch of sizes, but straight up the two lightest sizes are my favorite. Uh, I get the best action out of them and we haven't even gotten to that. So here's the deal where a stroll shad, a spunk shad, a sakamata, a freeloader, they're all rolling, right? twisting action. This thing is, it's almost in its own category. This thing is walking the dog underwater. 
like a spook on the surface, a big walk the dog top water bait. This is doing that same thing, but underwater. Completely different animal. So now you can picture in your head when they are chasing bait, when they're aggressive, how unbelievably effective that can be. We know how aggressive they get on a top water up on top. This is subsurface and you can do it from just below the surface out into deep water, depending on the head size you use. But the lighter heads have the farthest glide and it's amazing how well that works. Again, we fish that flat side down will give you the best gliding action. Now, when you work this with my stroll shad, I'm vibrating that thing, right? Just shaking as fast as I can go. Super light vibration. When I go to a BR fish, totally different. With the one hand, I'm reeling. The other, I'm bumping. Bump, bump, bump. You've got to give it the room to dart and to glide. Now you see what I'm talking. This jig and minnow thing has taken off so much that companies are trying to build outliers. They're trying to build baits that are different. That is such an advantage for you and I. Uh, it's amazing some of the tools that have come into our arsenal after the last, over the last year. It's really remarkable. So that's two baits. The next one up from Great Lakes Finesse, we've got the bait that they call the hover minnow. Now the hover minnow, again, I've got one rigged here, super unique. The hover minnow is much smaller than a lot of the other offerings. Great Lakes Finesse, as the name suggests, finesse plastics uh, designed by guys up in the Great Lakes, fishing a lot of that clear water, small mouth type stuff. That finesse game has moved cross country the last few years. Finesse fishing works everywhere. I don't care if it says Great Lakes Finesse. I don't care if you're in Texas or Florida or Georgia or California, this stuff absolutely works. Now, what makes this bait so unique is that you can get that great action out of it, strolling, pop, 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 right? Working that rod tip, dancing that bait. Now, I will say this bait seems to be very particular about the head. When you try this bait, you want to pair it to the Great Lakes Finesse head, okay? That head is very flat sided and that seems to make a big difference. Those flat sides seem to help this bait rock. When I put it on other things, when I put it on a guppy head, I don't get the same action out of it, okay? So just fair warning on that. Now, it's one thing to be strolling with it, but what makes this bait so unique is that when you stop and kill it, it'll start to glide and swim through the water. You can even get it to go into like the death spiral that Tim and I have talked about in other videos in the past. When you're in clear water and a fish is chasing and you kill that thing and it just starts a slow glide to bottom and it's cool because this bait, I don't know if you can either, if you can see it or not, I'll try to move it enough angles that you can see it. The belly is not flat, the belly is cupped. And that cup is catching water and that's what's letting it glide. And that also lets it, when it comes to bottom, it lands dead flat on bottom like that every time. It's a very cool bait. So if you're looking to downsize to get really finessey, if you've got clear water, especially as we go into winter and you get cold water, that can really be the deal. Now they make two different heads for it and I'll link both of them in the video description. If you can look through the package, this one, they're both 90 degree, but this one, the eyelet is right in the middle of the head. Hopefully it's showing. And in this one, the eyelet is right up on the nose. If you're spending more time chucking this thing out and being aggressive with it, you want that line tie out on the nose. But if you're fishing it slower, you're fishing it deeper, particularly as we go through winter, maybe you're dead dropping down to fish and playing with this bait, because you can almost get this thing with its ability to glide. It's almost like a soft ice jig, the way that thing will glide. You want that 
line tie that's farther back so that the bait will naturally hang flat. It'll hang in the water just like that because if you're tied to the nose and you just go slack, it'll wanna tip down. So the other head with that centered line tie point will cause that thing to sit horizontally in the water just the way you want it and you can really dance it, let it glide in that colder water. I'm telling you, it's five really unique baits today. Each one of them does something totally different than the others. Number four, from Damiki, we have the Armor Shad. Now, just a little, little history lesson for you. This whole thing, this whole fishing style in the US really kicked off with the Damiki rig, which is the little tiny Armor Shad on the little Damiki head and guys were dropping down over the tops of fish and working that thing and blast them. It won a ton of tournaments. That really kicked this style off in bass fishing in the US. This is the exact same bait, but now it's a full blown giant seven inch bait. Opposite end of the spectrum of the other ones we've been talking about. Tim and I have both wrecked shop with this thing this fall. Fish, just like with the swim bait, there's days where we're throwing a 2.8 Kitek, days where we're throwing a four and three quarter swammer, days when we're throwing glide baits, giant swim baits, you know, a Huddleston, all these different swim baits in all these different size ranges. Strolling is, is targeting those exact same fish. So it stands to reason that we wouldn't always throw those standard four to five inch baits, right? It would stand to reason that we need some options. That depths, the Sakamata Shad, comes in all sorts of sizes, from little tiny to giant, full blown eight inch baits. They're blowing up over here again, but they're just out of reach. If they come closer, I'm gonna pause, grab a rod and try and get one. But that Sakamata Shad comes from little tiny to giant, like as big as a full size swim bait. I have found that this seven inch Damiki Armor Shad is an amazing in between. It's big, but it's not giant. And I've done so well with this thing. I'll put it on a little heavier head from a three eighths on the light end up to a half ounce. Somewhere in there has been my sweet spot. And I have done so, I'm throwing it in the exact same places. You can throw it shallow, you can throw it deep. In the summer, we were ledge fishing with it, but this bait is remarkably soft. Like look, when I just hold it up, look how that thing wants to flip flop, right? It's remarkably soft. It just balls up in your hand. As a result, I do two different things with it. I stroll it shaken, but I can also burn it. And when you just reel it, like you've given up on strolling, you're at the end of your cast, you gotta burn it in. Even though it doesn't have a paddle tail on it, it creates this entire swimming motion in the back of the bait, like a snake. When you burn it, it, it looks unbelievable in the water. And the combination, sometimes I throw it out, let it go to bottom, and I'll like burn it for like 10 feet, then start strolling. Other times I'll stroll the whole cast, then burn it in at the end. Some days I catch all of them strolling. Sometimes I catch all of them burning. But this has opened up the door to catch some really big fish that are targeting bigger meals still while strolling. Uh, as far as heads go, you want a bigger hook for these. And the, my favorite one that I've been using is that Owner XL. And we did a review of that. The problem is they're not really in the country right now. So they there was a run of them that came over and I, I think they did like a test run, uh, or, or maybe that's just all they could get, I don't know. But a handful of shops in the South got them, nobody else got them, and, and I mean, they sold out in the blink of an eye, and I can tell you confidently that they sold out in the blink of an eye, because I could tell you, I drove around and bought a lot of them, because I was on this bite, and I wanted to have enough heads to get me through. But I, I believe there's a big shipment of them coming like, I'm hoping they're here this winter. Just keep an eye out for those, but like, this is a bigger Gamakatsu that has worked really well for me. And this, this head was not designed for strolling. It's a ball head, uh, but it has worked 
really well in the interim until you know some of these true XL sizes, a, a three aught, four aught, five aught hook um, in some of those heavier weights are widely available. But that guy, man, it catches them. All right, we've got one more. And this one is the most unique of the bunch. This one came to us from Z-Man. Again, this was an iCast launch. We've done a full review of this bait. It's not brand spanking new. You've probably seen it, but this is the Graf Shads. The Graf Shads is totally unique and 100% has to be in this video as we're headed to the cooler water months because that is where this thing is a dream. Now, I've blasted them on it in summer, but I've done my... Oh, one just blew up out there. Come back up. Oh, I'm so close to going for it. It was just one, you know what? Let's just fire out there anyway. Just one single blow up was all it was. Not even sure that one was a bass, but I know how to find out. We'll just stroll through there and find out. So back to that bait, the Graf Shads. I've done really well with it in summer, but it absolutely is at its peak in winter, in cold water, when fish have settled in, they're lethargic. They're still willing to eat bait fish, but they're not, you know, ripping around, chasing bait up in the shallows and the coves where I've really shined with that thing. Nope, he's not coming back. Dang, I'm not sure that was even a bass, but I had to try. The graph sheds, where this really has been a thing for me, is as I get into that cold water, fish will get, you know, on bluff walls. They'll get on the ends of long tapering main lake points. Places where they set up on structure and they're just sitting there. Traditionally, we're targeting those fish with a football jig, with a drop shot, you know, these slow moving winter time methods. It's typically deeper than I can reach with a speed crank to even try and fire them up. This graph shads has become my silver bullet in that situation. Uh, it works so well. Now, I just told you it came out at iCast, but I've already had a winter with it. I had a buddy that had like prototypes of this and I didn't even know what it was. I didn't know the name of it, had no clue, but I got my hands on them and spent a little bit of time. And I mean, I messed some fish up on that thing without even knowing what it was. And then we're walking around iCast and I'm like, that's that bait, that's it. I've caught them on that thing. And I had caught big ones on it, so I was pumped to see this thing on the market. Now, the way it is rigged and the way I fish it is completely different than the others. This is a line through. So you'll see a little pinhole on the top. Also, this setup, it's an Elaztec tail on this thing. So it does not play well with other plastics, but it's incredibly soft and has amazing movement with just the most subtle bumps. The heads, it comes in three sizes, but all three heads are the exact same profile. So like sitting on the deck of the boat, here, here's a perfect example. This is a, oh, there's a bass right there. Come on, buddy. We'll get back to that grass sheds here in just a second. Do it. Oh, he's chasing. I went the wrong way though. He went to the right. Come on, come on. Oh, he tagged it. Maybe there's more than one. Let's find out. Come on, buddy. I love this method. Strolling is so much fun. It's just so effective. Nope, that was him. He just short struck it. Bummer. Hopefully we get another shot before this is over. Like I said, I caught a few. Well, there he is. While I was just setting up camera, laying the baits out, getting ready. Come here. I'm telling you, this technique works. And I'm not kidding. There really are fish blowing up out behind the boat, chasing bait around. That's that four inch hog farmer stroll shad. They eat that thing. It's amazing. I think that was that same fish. I really do think there was just one, but I'll come through there again just to make sure. I think he shorted it. And then when I came back by, he tagged it. Yeah, nobody else home. That was him. He took two shots at it. All right. See, I wasn't kidding. 
Back to our baits. Graph Shads, this one is 3 8 ounce. This one is quarter ounce, but the heads and the bodies are the exact same size. They are manipulating the type of metal they make the head out of so that they maintain the exact same profile, the same size and shape, regardless of what it weighs. And I think that's super cool. So the way this is done, there's a little pinhole. You put your line through the bait, and then there's an eyelet on the bottom. And you go through the bait, and then you tie to that eyelet. I tie with a San Diego jam knot. Not every knot can do that. Um, so you'll need a knot like a Palomar. You can't tie this on with a Palomar because the line is through the bait. San Diego jam is perfect. I come through and I tie to that. Now, why are they doing that? Because it creates a bait. It's unbelievably stable. It is perfectly balanced. It sits perfectly upright and horizontal in the water, no matter what, because the line is through it. So everything you do from there is causing the bait to rock, but it will forever be sitting in that perfect position. There's none of this hanging from your rod tip, right? It always looks right to the fish. Now, this bait, it's called the Graph Shads. There's no question they designed it to work beautifully with forward-facing sonar. But where I'm really shining with this is actually right down on bottom. And how I fish it is as unique as the bait itself. When I'm fishing this thing, I'm barely touching it. So you just saw how I'm strolling, right? Pop, 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 pop. And they just come out and blast that thing. But when fish are, fish are, oh, there's one right there. When fish are lethargic, come on. There's more than one. They're chasing. Come, come on, come on. When fish are lethargic and they're doing the opposite of this, I went the wrong way. They're breaking to the right. Hang on. I really think we can catch one here. When fish are lethargic, they're glued to bottom. Came up short. The group kind of split. A group of fish came in busting and they went two different ways. I can't believe we didn't get one of those. Bummer. So back to, you know how hard it is to focus while you're trying to catch a bass and talk? When the fish are really lethargic, they're glued to bottom. They don't want to play. That is when that bait is such a killer. I throw to bottom, let it hit, and then I lift it up just off the bottom. You know, there's one. Maybe six inches off of the bottom is where I'm going to keep that grass sheds. This is fun. I should blast fish sitting down in every video. This is a good time. Oh man, he ate it. Come here, buddy, I'll get it out. Come on, there we go. <laughs> so I throw that thing out, let it hit the bottom, lift it up just off bottom, and then I start a super subtle retrieve. And I'll show you in just a second what I mean when I get this cast in. So, I'm doing this right now, right? When I'm throwing the graph shads, it's just a bump, bump, bump. I'm just barely moving the bait and I'm just barely off of the bottom. So I know that my bait is sitting perfectly. It's just hovering just above bottom. And I just give it these little bumps that causes it to rock. And that's it dead of winter, colder water temperatures, that thing has smashed them for me. And I'm talking smashes, big ones. I've done it blind, just fishing. You know, I know they're on a point. I've caught them here before. So I throw it out. I let it sink and hit bottom. And I just boop, boop, just barely working that thing. I've dropped straight down on fish, 2D sonar. I see them vertical under the boat, drop it down lift it up to just above their head and then hop 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 and you'll see that fish come up and they'll just sit there and then boof they eat that thing so cool and then of course forward facing sonar you can throw it lead fish and do the same thing it's just 
such a fun method of fishing. Now, strolling, let's talk rods briefly here at the end, okay? Uh, one of the coolest things about strolling is that you already own a rod for this. Basically, any shorter, so let's say seven foot or less spinning rod, medium, medium action, even some medium heavies, you're gonna be fine. It'll throw it beautifully. So for most of us, that first rod that we ever bought was a, a seven foot medium or something very close to that. That's what most people start out bass fishing with. And as you fine tune your bass fishing, you get better and better and better, you get more technique specific. And that seven foot medium starts collecting dust in the corner because it's not a technique specific rod. It's the one that can kind of do everything. You don't have to let that rod collect dust. Now you can grab that rod and it's perfect for strolling. Now with that said, as you can imagine, if we're seeing all this innovation in the jig heads and the baits, you better believe we're seeing innovation in rods as well. And there is a difference. So. When this kicked off, the rod I was using was an X-Pride 6.8 medium. That was my favorite rod for strolling. Since then, oh, got him. Oh, that's a good one. A little better than the last couple. I'm telling you, if you haven't tried this, you have lost your mind. It works. Come here. Oh, I broke him off. Darn it. Well, that's all right. Just popped my leader. We caught too many fish in a row without retying. That's all right. That was a little better one. Just gonna wind on my remaining leader here. If you haven't tried this style of fishing, they eat it. They respond to this. That's what I'm trying to, to tell you guys. And subsequently I'm getting to show you guys. So back to the rods. There's been innovation as rods in rods as well. Uh, the biggest thing is that a handful of brands have started bringing over the solid tip rods. Okay, the two main rods I'm throwing now are both from Shimano. They're in the X-Pride line. You guys know, bang for the buck. Those are about as good as it's ever going to get in bass fishing. These are rods that are in the mid to upper 200s that fish like they're in the 400s. Now, that's way out of some people's budget and you don't need that. Again, seven foot medium and send it. You'll be all right. But bang for the buck, they're an amazing value. Within that line, there's now the 610 medium solid tip, which is a 610 medium extra fast. And then there's this, that's what I've been throwing with you right there. This is the 610 medium heavy solid, which 610 medium heavy extra fast. So a medium and a medium heavy, but they're both solid tips. What is a solid tip? It's exactly what it sounds like. This material, it's all hollow, it's a tube. When you get down here to the tip, this is no longer hollow, it's a solid material. That allows them to build an extra fast or even an extra, extra fast tip, which really helps with vibrating some of these lighter, smaller baits. You can implement a ton of action without overworking. It does an awesome job with baits like the Stroll Shad. Really wish I had just reached over the side and grabbed that fish instead of trying to lift him, but that's okay. Light line, not retying, it happens. But those solid tip rods, I have really noticed a difference. I get a lot of bites when I'm working those smaller baits on those rods. So anymore, my main rod, is the 610 medium heavy, which is the one that's in my hand now. That's what I'm throwing the Sakamata on, the Freeloader, the Spunk Shad. The 610 medium, the one that you just saw me using, that I caught all these fish on here, that one is the one that you're going to see me throw the smaller, lighter weight, eight ounce heads, even lighter than that. All the lighter heads, all the smaller baits I'll throw on the medium versus the medium heavy. The only other thing that just leaps out at me, if you're fishing uh, offshore, deeper water, 
there's starting to be a lot more sinking braid options available to you. Sunline introduced All Might, and All Might is a really remarkable line. So I'm throwing braid to leader on everything. Uh, typically, I'm throwing braid to eight pound fluoro for the little baits and braid to 10 pound fluoro for the larger baits. Uh, if I'm fishing really deep water, I have started experimenting more and more with All Might. This braid sinks. It's not a floating braid. Most braids will float or remain near the surface. This won't. It'll sink. And it's amazing how much better contact you have with your bait. You wouldn't think that it would be such a thing. But when that braid is in a straight line through the water down to your bait versus laying out on the surface in a slow arc to your bait, the contact that you have and the way you're moving your bait is much more connected. So if you're going to spend a lot of time doing this, particularly offshore, you know, deeper than 15 to 20 foot, uh, you know, and from then on, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60 foot, wherever you're fishing, if you're going to spend a lot of time doing that, consider doing it on a sinking braid. But if this is just a crossover reel for you, that you're doing a lot of techniques on the same rod, because like a the 610 medium heavy solid tip, I'm doing a ton of stuff with that rod. Same with the medium. I mean, the medium, will because it's a solid tip, it actually works great as a drop shot rod, works great as a Ned Rig rod. It's great for rolling a 2.8 Kitec. It's good for a lot of things. And then the medium heavy with the solid tip, is lighter than what it sounds like. So normally I wouldn't use a medium heavy for a lot of things, but with that lighter tip, I absolutely can. They're very universal spinning rods. So if you're using them for a lot of things, stick with a traditional braid and you'll be better off there. But all in all, it is such a fun way to fish. You can catch a pile of fish using these baits these five in particular, I think will make a big difference for you as we head through fall and into winter. And I wanted to give you a head start on one, what they are and what each one of them is for, and then how I work each one differently to take advantage of the conditions. Again, I'll link everything in the video description for you. The heads, the baits, I'll give you favorite colors for all of them. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon. That is so much fun. That's what I'm talking about.